My similitude in comparison with the other prophets before me is that of a man who has built a house completely and excellently except for a place of one brick. When people see the house, they admire its beauty and say, how splendid the house will be if the missing brick is put in its place. So I am that brick and I am the last of the prophets. Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Today we will be talking about the mercy to mankind, the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. It's amazing how one human being, one human being, can bring us all together. Allah describes the Prophet as a mercy, rahmatun lil alameen, a mercy unto the worlds of sentient beings, of mankind and jinkind. The Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and the guidance that he was sent with are an absolute embodiment of mercy. This opportunity, celebrating mercy, is a chance for all of us to reflect upon the life of the Prophet, peace and blessings of Allah be upon him, reflect upon how we can become more like him. His main theme was to bring peace and mercy to this world. We have to show that the religion of Islam brought by the Prophet was the greatest opportunity for the world to change for the better, not for the worse. I was afraid that on the day of judgment God would ask me, didn't you have enough mercy in your heart? What we were just listening to was the trailer from the Mercy Mission um, and that is basically an event, a global online event held and different scholars basically speak about the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and just an attempt to basically, I don't know, convey his seerah, his life, his mission in a way that's very relevant um, to our contemporary young English speaking audience. And I think that's very, very important, especially in light of events that have happened over the last one or two years in terms of the cartoons, in terms of basically blasphemy that was said about the Prophet, just different things. But first... You know, sometimes girls, I find it hard to relate to the Prophet because we never have seen him. But he has been described, you know, through his looks and his characters and attributes. So let's have a look at what we do know. Muhammad, peace be upon him, was a white man with a rosy tinge. He was of a height a little above the average. He was well built with broad shoulders. His belly never protruded out of his chest profile. He used to walk briskly and firmly, lifting each foot off the ground. His gait was described as it would tire others to keep pace with him. Muhammad's companions described him as a handsome person with prominent forehead, high-tipped nose, long eyelashes, large black eyes with well-set teeth and a pleasant smile. He had slightly curly hair and a thick beard. His companions indicated that he had a friendly bright face that looked like a full moon. He did not laugh loudly. His laugh was mostly a smile that would show his teeth a bit like hailstones. His cheerfulness and open personality were felt by all people. Oh, I can see you guys getting teary here. No, I think it's really beautiful. And there's another hadith that says one, once the companion was walking at night and the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was actually walking towards him. And it was a full moon that night. And he goes, I kept looking from the moon down to the Prophet, from the moon up to, um, up to the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And he goes, he was like the illuminated moon. And I just couldn't get my eyes off him. So I think, I don't know, that's really, really beautiful. Especially as we mentioned, it is the month of Rabi al Awal. So for our listeners out there, what we wanted to speak about today, inshallah, was what can we actually learn from the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam? Not just in terms of Sunnah and Sirah, which is very very important. What we wanted to speak about things that are actually relevant to us in our settings, in the professional life, at uni, discussions on YouTube, on Facebook. How do we deal with things? Okay. So the first thing um, we wanted to mention was basically don't be surprised or shocked emotionally or intellectually about what's happening. Now, what I mean by that is don't be shocked and surprised about what they are saying about the Prophet Sallallahu in terms of the cartoons, in terms of, you know, basically all the horrible things that are being said about him. And there's obviously been a lot of that recently. Yeah, that's right. Because it's seen. nothing new. Like, if we look back to the Sira, 
of the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam. Um, you know the incident about when they would actually call him a crazy, like crazy. They would call him a magician. There was that one incident where he was praying at the Kaaba and someone came and put camel intestines over him, all over him. But yet, yeah, subhanallah, he never reacted overboard. He never, like sometimes he did um, match their insults insults but he never went down to their level or went to a lower level than them and when we say he matched their insults we don't mean that he necessarily insulted them back we're specifically referring to a story or not a story an incident that occurred where people would say to him assalamu alaikum which may basically means instead of saying peace be upon you the islamic greeting they would say poison be upon you and he replied with wa alaikum assalam yeah, which he pretty much just returned it to them. He he didn't actually go out of his way to to insult. Well, that was going to be my second point. That if you are number one is the reason why I'm saying not to be shocked or emotionally, you know, shaken is because when you are in a state of shock, you can't control your reactions. Yeah, and you as Muslims, we need to be measured. We need to be you know controlled. Stable. Yep. So the second point is, if you are going to respond, okay, respond in a way that's suitable to the prophetic manner. Now, how do we know what this prophetic manner is it's actually defined for us in the Quran Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says وَعِبَادُ الرَّحْمَنِ الَّذِينَ يَمْشُونَ عَلَى الْأَرْضِ هَوْنًا وَإِذَا خَاطَبَهُمُ الْجَاهِلُونَ قَالُوا سَلَامًا and the servants of the most merciful are those who walk upon the earth easily and when the Ar- when and when the ignorant address them harshly they say words of peace and it's really really beautiful because the 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 asma'ullah husna that Allah has chosen to convey himself in this verse mm. he mentions himself as the most merciful so he wants us to mirror that quality of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in our actions the quality by, of mercy by the quality of mercy so we show these people mercy and how do we know what mercy means as you guys said through emulating the prophetic example of the way he he dealt with harsh situations. And you know, it wasn't so far from what happened today. Like, for example, in the time of the Prophet wasallam, the Kaaba was some sort of a notice board, you know? The Arabs of the time were very famous for being fluent uh, in yes. Arabic and very good at poetry, basically. Mm-hmm. And they'd go and they'd write poetry and hang it up on the Kaaba. Now, Amtala, you were actually telling me this. Yeah, but the Prophet, they used to say, insult um, the Prophet in, in their, their poetry. poetry. So the Prophet, you know, some people, the companions were like, no, we have to stop this and take them down. But the Prophet just said, leave them, ignore them, let them say what they want. That was basically our today's version of a propaganda media machine. And the Prophet ﷺ realized in certain situations by, you know, for example, taking that down or being, you know, getting angry, you're, that's the reaction people want to see. Exactly. So, and, and like to our audience out there, obviously we had, you know, mashallah, the likes of Omar and Ali radiallahu anhu, who at that time were very young, strong, heated, you know, Prophet, let me, you know, do something. Yeah. Prophet, like, the Prophet ﷺ Ooh. recognized those qualities in him and he appreciated these qualities. He didn't say, no, you know, become complacent and sit down. And then you had other Sahabiyin who were more more, you know, serene and tranquil like um, Uthman radiallahu anhu, anhu, Abu Bakr radiallahu anhu. But the Prophet utilized both their qualities in achieving his aims. So for example, when times were for battle, when times that required energy, he would get them to speak, he would get them to lead, he would get them to, you know, you know, basically Take get the charge, crowd. Yeah, yeah, get the crowd. Make use of that heated reaction. That's right. And other times where wisdom was required, for example, you know, the Prophet Sallallahu when he actually passed away, and that was shocking, like absolutely shocking and dismaying mm. um, and the two reactions basically that was mirrored in that incident yes. Omar radiallahu anhu in his just utter shock couldn't even stand up was weeping like a baby and said whoever tells me Muhammad has died I will chop your head off and then Abu Bakr radiallahu anhu comes out and says if you were worshipping Prophet Muhammad وسلم, he said something along these lines obviously not the exact words but if you were worshipping Muhammad then Muhammad has died but if you are worshipping Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, then Allah is the great who never dies that's right that's right inshallah they were so fluent and they had such a way with their words and yeah. it was, they were so powerful yeah, through their right. language inshallah. you know and I, and I think th- it, honestly, our job as ambas- ambassadors for Islam, whether it be males or females, obviously, if for our female audience, the ones that do wear the scarf, whether you like it or not, you you are treated like a billboard. And I know sometimes it can be over, you know, overwhelming, overwhelming yeah, why, because you feel like you it? always yeah. have to explain yourself. Um, but I think it can you can turn it into a very positive situation if you feel if you develop that love with the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam, and you feel like you want to tell everybody about him. It's like honestly, you know, when you love something or like. Mm. 
Mm-hmm. You're in love with someone. You just want everybody to know. You just want everybody to see that happiness shine through you. And did you hear about this? And did you hear about you. that? Yeah. 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 When we develop that relationship with the Prophet Sallallahu where we are at that level where we love him so much, we want to tell people about him. So when people approach us at work, at uni, and ask us, you know, are you Muslim? Or ask about us about Islam or the Prophet, we won't feel like, oh, here we go again. Mm. We'd feel like, you know what? Thanks for asking. I'm going to tell you about this. And I think the same thing goes with our male, um, with our with male brothers, audience, yeah. Bro- brothers, because they always, you know, cop it in terms of, you know, male, Muslim males, you know, being extremists. There's a lot of pressure with things violent. like, you know, if you're at uni, we're going to go for a drink afterwards. And I think some of the, the brothers find it a bit more difficult than the girls because I think the scarf can be a bit of a, a turn off. Yeah. And the parents. Yeah. Yeah. But like, I, th- I think it's particularly relevant to mention that a lot of the times we think you know these are modern situations it's it why you can't tell me that in islam there's something that i can relate to what i'm going through now it's a 21st century and what century was that but in fact just going through incidences that occurred throughout the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam the times there are so many mm. things that mirrored it you know like uh, for example what i just mentioned with the alcohol thing i mean alcohol is such a huge part of australian culture so this is something that we encounter quite often you know like my friends will be like okay we want to go out let's let's go to the um let's go have lunch in the bar because it's actually cheaper there and you know uni <laughs> students love that's to right. go to cheap places that's right but you can't do that you can even if you say i'm gonna i'm not gonna drink you you just can't go somewhere that serves alcohol it's not islamically correct but this isn't something that's exclusive to our times my point is the prophet sallallahu actually went through the same thing because mm-hmm. before islam outlawed alcohol it was a very big part of the prophet's culture and subhanallah because you know how the prophet was masum he he was uh, exempt from from sinning uh i remember once he wasn't into parties but once he decided he wanted to go you know gave into <laughs> the peer pressure to a wedding yeah and there was going to be a lot of booze there and he's on his way and, and he, he takes a short. Asleep. Yeah, he he took a nap in the middle of the road and didn't wake up until the party was yeah. over. <laughs> so so if anyone's tempted to go out to the bar, <laughs> take a small nap. nap. <laughs> take a small nap before you get there. Inshallah, like divine intervention will get in the way. But I just love that that's something that happened in the Prophet's time, and you really can take it and relate Not it. Not just that. For example, you know, I know these days many many um, young people will face the issue of you know dating fornication adult because basically the institutional marriage and its sacredness has basically gone away in modern times now we think you know this is issues we're facing the prophets you know sahaba as if they'd ever think about something like that and it's really interesting to note that a young man actually came up to the prophet sallallahu and goes to him prophet let me commit zina let me commit fornication <laughs> imagine going up to the prophet and be like hey dude i'm just gonna get it going please give me the sanction you know and the prophet sallallahu didn't tell him like haram astaghfirullah you know yeah. go to hell he told him he goes would you accept it for your mom would you accept it for your sister would you accept it for your daughter in a rational way mm. so i think when we actually read the seerah of the prophet sallallahu and we see his character seeping through the pages it makes us appreciate who he is and it, it gives us that you know prophetic traits hopefully